Hello everybody, welcome back. This is my April Rewind, where I tell you about things that made an impact on me in April. <laughs> we'll start with TV. I've done a lot of TV. Happy on Sci-Fi is back. It has Christopher Maloney, Patton Oswalt voices happy who is a little blue imaginary friend this season is all about easter and it was mega make easter great again for the first time <laughs> and the first season because this is the second season the first season was all about christmas and, you know, this one I said is all about Easter and the ramifications of what happened during Easter. It's it's a weird mix of things. It's got a mystery we're trying to solve. So it's got detective work. It's got murder and mayhem. It has... They're all suffering forms of like PTSD. And you get to see Christopher Maloney's butt <laughs> at least once an episode. But I really enjoy it. It's such a great show. It's in the middle of the week. It's on Wednesdays. I just really enjoy the show. It's definitely not for kids and if you don't like blood like this is not going to be your kind of show I think because there is quite a bit because it's like a it's not a slasher film at all it's it's violent majorly violent and there are like S and M moments, so it's very much an adult show, but I love the crap out of that show. Um, in April we had Watchathon Week from Xfinity. If you had Xfinity, and you got to watch shows that you may not have the subscription to like HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, there was, there's Epics, Acorn. Acorn didn't really have anything to interest me. And there were some shows on HBO that I did want to watch, but I was also trying to do something else at the same time, so it didn't correlate. So I'll be looking for a preview again if I want to watch it. But I got to watch True Detective Season 3 with Mar Shashala Ali. He recently did the movie Green Book. Um, he was in Moonlight, the movie, not the TV show. Um, and I went like to look at his IMDB page. And he's been in tons of things. He was even in like Alpha, like from years ago on sci-fi but he looked so different but I freaking loved season three more than I loved season one I didn't even watch season two but season three was so good we got to see it in three different time periods it was the 70s the 90s and currently and he solved the mystery but he doesn't know he solved the mystery <laughs> because he had been experiencing memory issues for years. And I don't know, if it may have been part of the trauma that he experienced when he was in Vietnam and, you know, that helped exacerbate, um his issues because he does have 
like a dementia, Alzheimer's type of situation in the present. But it was a really, I really did enjoy this one a lot. I don't know what's going on with my hair right now. Keep it together. But I really enjoyed season three. And it also had, um, oh, what is his name? Steven Dorff. And I could not figure out who he was when I first started watching because we saw him in the 70s. I was like, what? Who is this dude? But then 90s, I was like, oh my God, there you go. Also on HBO, Barry, season three came back. So I've been able to see the first three episodes. Oh, the third episode, what? Oh, it left me on a cliffhanger. I'm so mad. <laughs> like, I wanted four. I needed four. <laughs> I really do enjoy Barry. Barry is Bill Hader. It has Henry Winkler. Barry is played by Bill Hader. It's a dark comedy. It's about a guy who... He's an ex-Marine. And he is a killer for hire. So he's a hitman. And... He ends up in California and he starts taking a drama class from the with these other students who are trying to hone their craft. They are in these workshops and Henry Winkler is the drama teacher and last season we were left on this major cliffhanger. We still don't really know what happened. We can speculate, but we don't have definitive proof of what happened yet. But I really enjoy Barry, so if you get the chance, please check out Barry. Like, season one, I'll be real with you. Some things happened, and I still don't like Barry's girlfriend. I don't... I think now that we're learning a little bit about... Her backstory, you can kind of understand some things, but. And then I didn't really enjoy some of Barry's interactions. Because Barry. He's on some kind of spectrum. He's not. He's not complete, you know, it's, he's, his moral. He's morally ambiguous, definitely, but. Like, the way he interacts, there's something, there's some kind of disconnect. Then on Showtime, Showtime? Or is it Cinemax? It's Cinemax, not Showtime. Tales for, Mike Judge presents Tales from the Bus. First season was all country. I loved it. Mike Judge, he is the creator of Beavis and Butthead and... King of the Hill. And Mike Judge is the voice of Hank Hill. And anyway, in this, it's all like animated. This season, we got some actual pictures of the people. Because this season, season two, was all about black artists. And it had... Um, and it was, a lot of it was members that have been part of, like, the Parliament, the Funkadelics, Parliament, George Clinton, we had Bootsy Collins, and it was, because it all meshed, and this season, duh, it was all about funk. There we go, it was all about the different forms of funk. We had, like I said, Bootsy Collins, we had Parliament... We had James Brown. We had, oh, I can't remember her name, but I'll put it on the screen. She was married to Miles Davis at one point, and, but she started to, she was singing songs. It was in the 70s, you know, it was women's liberation, and she was singing these they were raunchy for the time, you know, and people, 
didn't gravitate towards it. But like right now, I think it would be definitely, you know, something that would fit. Um, but yeah, it was just, I really love music documentaries. I love how, and this funk, like it all connected. Like there was, um, oh my God, what's this dude's name? But Prince, he was connected with Prince. Um, he was in the movie Purple Rain. He was his foe in the movie. And Marvin, ugh, I'll put it across here. But we learned that he kind of wanted to do his own thing. And Prince, Prince, <laughs> he was in several of these stories. He used to get on, oh, Rick James was one of the stories they did. He used to get on Rick James's nerves. Like, there was all these clashing of some artists. The only one that didn't really clash a lot was, like, um, George Clinton, Par uh, Funkadelic, Parliament. Because a lot of them was drop dropping acid all the time. So, that was a, <laughs> it was a mellowness over there. But... Some of them, you know, they had a little infighting in the groups. And James Brown, he was like a dictator type of thing. He, everything had to be a specific way. And he didn't tolerate drugs. But then he got into drugs. Because he ended up trying something that was laced with angel dust. And angel dust was no joke. And that was a very potent form of an LSD movies. Did I do any movies this month? No movies this month. Nope, no movies. Books, I'm reading books all day, every day. Um, I think I'm, what am I at? 108 books, I think, for this year alone. So in four months, <laughs> I've read 108 books, which is very pleasing to me. I haven't read 100 books in a year in a very long time. Well, now that I'm documenting uh, on Goodreads, I love that Goodreads can keep track of the things that I've read. But, yeah, 108 books. This month, I did the Magical Readathon that Book Roast, or G, created. It, there is BookTuber part. There was on Twitter. There was something on Instagram, but I missed the Instagram piece. But I really enjoyed it. I finished all 12 of my owls, so I am on track to continue my career path to be an alchemist. An alchemist, you had to read the 12 prompts. In August, I have to read 17 books. And I really, really hope I have books to fit these prompts. But it'll be very exciting to see what the prompts are for August. Oh, I just played Quidditch on... Twitter with them yesterday. Oh, it was so fun. We didn't win yesterday, but it was fun. They won today because I missed it. <laughs> so apparently I am not helpful to my team, the Gryffindor Lions. And also some booktubers. Oh my goodness, it's so adorable. To see them, because they all use their bookcases as their backdrops. And they have like the tall bookcases. And it's just neat to see how everyone sets up their bookcases. Like, you know, they do colors. Um, maybe they do authors. I don't really know. But then they always have like neat little knickknacks inside of it. My books are not set up like that. Not at all. I have short bookcases. They have three drawers, uh, three shelves a piece. 
and the top shelves on two of them are very short like short short so I usually put knickknacks in that but it's so nice to see how people set up their books like if I had the space and tall bookcases I think I would definitely Roy G. Biv myself I got a new bed frame it is made of tulip poplar wood I will leave a link below so you can see what the bed looks like I got it from Wayfair I got it when Wayfair was having their Wayfair flash sale it was like 24 hours or no 36 hours of sales and the bed had to be put all together if you follow me on Instagram you saw when I put up it was just like two boxes they were like 61 pounds a piece the whole bed had to be put together I really love the bed it's very sturdy like the only thing that creaks is like the headboard but I don't think that's a manufacturing issue that's a floor issue because my room <laughs> is on a slant which makes no sense but they need to put in new subfloors in this whole apartment but they don't want to do that so everything is at an angle so I think that's why it creaks a little but it's really sturdy I got these drawers they are freaking humongous they are like 36 not 36 at least 30 inches long you know and they're really deep I was able to put some of my candles, my, all my candles are up underneath there. So I'm really excited that I have really nice storage. Because I don't really put things underneath the bed to begin with except for a couple pairs of boots and a dry rack. But I'm really impressed. Yeah, I really like the bed. Um, music. I got to watch Coachella that first weekend, the 12th through the 14th. I don't know what Kid Cudi was doing. Like, he's taking the award of how I felt Post Malone was in 2018. Like, I don't... The vibe was weird and off. And I only knew, really, like, one and a half Kid Cudi song. Um... But the mics were ridiculous. Like, Coachella was having a lot of issues with their mics. I wish we would have been able to see the second weekend. Because then they just kept talking about it's curated. So we didn't get to really see it. Which didn't make any sense. You don't say you're going to show me two weekends and I don't get both weekends. But I was really hoping to see if the mic situation cleared up. But Coachella, I enjoyed Ariana Grande's, Weezer's, Lizzo. I found a new artist, Lizzo. She has a new album out, Cause I Love You. She just celebrated her birthday on the 27th. I really enjoy Lizzo. I enjoy her vibe, her style. Um, Janelle Monae was really good. I really liked... Bad Bunny and J Belvin. I didn't see DJ Snakes. Although I had all three up. <laughs> if I wasn't watching one of them. If I wasn't watch, If I was watching one. The other two were muted. And it was nice that I could go back. To see stuff. But I closed DJ Snake down. Because I was like. I don't even know who he is. But he had Cardi B on there. Um. Ooh, Jaden. I really like Jaden. He has a lot of energy. Um, and he was performing a lot of new stuff. I'm trying to remember who else I liked. Ooh, Childish Gambino. I enjoyed him. I really enjoyed the movie he and Rihanna made. You can see it on Amazon Prime now. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Ooh, Drake has a new album out. I will put the name of it. 
it's very different from any of the music he's put out in the past. And it's not a bad thing. I think it's more reflective of who he is right now from last year. You know, he's had time to sit, ruminate, um, put his thoughts down. A lot of the, he had a little Wayne on a lot of the songs. He even had a song with Peter John and Bjorn, like very different style, but you could just tell the different tone, like how he's feeling about himself, his personal thoughts, reflections on the drama from last year. Um... I think that's everything from April. My daddy had a birthday. He was 75. No, 77. <laughs> 77. He turned 77. Yep, 77. My math was killing me. But yeah, he turned 77. <sighs> Next month, I am not looking forward to next month at all. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed my April Rewind. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I would love to have you. And if you've already subscribed, thank you very much. I want you guys to be safe. Be well. Peace.